Hey everyone, welcome back to DS Creative Studio. Today we're tackling an exciting challenge to see if we can machine titanium with a hobby CNC. Specifically, I'm adding a juice groove to this titanium cutting board using my Shapeoko 3XXL. Let's see if this machine is up for the task. So here's the titanium cutting board. It's sleek, durable, and in need of a juice groove. Why titanium? Well, it's strong, antibacterial, and compared to knife steel, it's nice and soft, so it won't dull your blades. As you can see here in this graph, it's just a little bit harder than brass and aluminum. But machining it on a hobby CNC, that's the real test. So what we'll do first is snag a good picture of this alongside a ruler so we can import things into Fusion 360 and scale our design correctly. All right, over in Fusion 360, I'll import the image of the board and sketch the path for our groove. Precision's not too key here, but I'm gonna take my time anyway. Once I have the line where we want to cut, I set up the tool paths accordingly. For this operation, I'm going to use a two flute, quarter inch ball nosed bit. Since the board itself is only two millimeters thick, we're going to go 0.9 millimeters deep using a 0.15 millimeter depth of cut. Using extremely shallow passes like this is going to put minimal strain on the machine and will allow us to cut faster. Moving relatively fast is important when using a palm router as it spins 16,000 RPM on its lowest setting. Balancing router RPM with feed speed is key to achieving proper chip load, the amount of material each tooth removes per pass. The formula is simple. Chip load equals your feed rate divided by your RPM times the number of flutes. In my case, I'm running a two flute bit at 16,000 RPM and feeding at 1,000 millimeters per minute. That gives me just about 0 0.03 millimeters per tooth, which is pretty low. However, this is not an industrial machine and honestly, I'm not even sure it'll be able to handle this. Now that I've got the tool paths, it's time to export our G code. All right, we're back in the garage and it's time to get started machining this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the machine initialized. Okay, for work holding for this thing, we're just gonna be sticking with good old fashioned masking tape and CA glue. Gonna pick which side I want to be face up. They look the same to me. Okay, now I'm gonna load up my zeroing tool. And that is this, it's just a quarter inch precision ground steel shaft.
All right, once we're all zeroed, let's go ahead and get our real bit in there. This is gonna be our bit. It's a quarter inch, two flute, ball nose bit. Solid carbide with titanium aluminum nitride coating. Great for high temperature resistance, which should make it a good choice for a dry cut on soft titanium. <coughs> All right, I also want to point out that I'm geared up now to hearing protection and eye protection. And I think that's particularly important when you're cutting metal and uh, when you're sending it past where you really think your machine is normally capable of. So just in case any broken bits, flying parts, you know what I'm saying. Let's go. So the first pass should just be along the surface, so I can confirm the positioning, but it's obvious pretty quick that my spoil board is no longer perfectly level, so my groove is going to be slightly deeper on one end. Oh well. The first few passes were fine, but once the bit really started to engage, you could hear the difference. That's a lot of vibration going on. Ooh, that don't sound good. Well, that worked. Not so well, but I think I gotta adjust the, bring the Z down a little bit. All right, so that worked more or less. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is bring the machine back and re-zero here at the front of the machine to try to get some of these areas that look like they were maybe a little lower than the than the rest and we'll run it again and uh yeah i'll drop it by maybe a half mil and that'll get that juice groove a little bit deeper here in this in this uh front portion So that's what I did. Round two was able to get the groove to a usable depth, and despite the horrible sounds it was making, things went pretty well, until they didn't. On the last pass, the machine really seemed to get bogged down and slowed to a crawl. I hit pause immediately. Well, for the most part, that went pretty well. Right up until that end there, I saw it slowing down and I wasn't gonna wait. Uh, I wasn't gonna wait for bad things to happen. So we hit pause and uh, let's take a look. This looks pretty good for a, a one, a first attempt, and two, for a belt-driven, uh, very not level hobby CNC, you know? I just got to clean up some of these extra burrs. Some of these chips kind of got welded here. I don't know how well this is showing up. But the, the cuts themselves, just on the edges, seem to have a little bit of chip weld, but 
the the bottom of the channel actually looks okay. That's not that's not terrible. All right, that went surprisingly well. We got a nice nice groove, very even, uh, except for in the front there. And I'm gonna blame that on the machine, not having the flat enough spoil board. Uh, I've surfaced several times. I think it's just the design of this frame. These uh, Shapeoko 3s have a really, I'm gonna call it flimsy frame that just doesn't stand up or hold its flatness. They seem to have fixed that in the, in the newer versions, but I'm working with what I got, so. Um, yeah, I'm real pleased with that. And now let's flip this thing over and get some etching done. Maybe do something fun. All right. I decided to throw the drag engraving tool on the router and add my logo to the bottom of the board. In hindsight, I wish I'd sanded or polished out the cut marks before doing this. Still, it was a good learning experience, even if it didn't go too smooth. It just paused because it's doing f***ing updates. No, God, please, no, no! As it turns out, that ended up not being a big deal. The machine kept it zero and I was able to reload the file and run it again. I also marked out locations for adhesive rubber feet. This will protect the engraving and cut down on some of that metal clanking sound. Hopefully. So that's it. As it turns out, you can machine titanium on a hobby level CNC. Sort of. It's not pretty, but it's done. I already have ideas on how I could approach this better in the future. Like using a thinner bit to reduce the cutting force. If you have any tips or tricks on getting the most from your hobby CNC, drop them in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm Roman for DS Creative Studio, and I'll see you in the next video with more creative DIY projects. Until then, keep creating.